Okay, we're going to continue on designing this rocket, and uh, our next internal part is probably going to be an engine block. Now, the engine block is going to go right here inside the engine tube, so we need to find the engine tube, and we're going to attach it to that. And we'll find engine block, and uh, this is going to be, this time I am going to select from the database. Uh, I'm going to use a 13 to 18 centering ring, and right now I'll put it right there. Okay, and then we'll just slide it until it touches the front of the engine itself. Uh, material is paper. Uh, color is going to be purple. Internal color, let's make it a brownish color. And now we have our engine block. We'll click OK. Uh, things like engine hooks, um, we don't have a button called engine hook. Um, so, but we do need to account for the mass because it does affect the trajectory of the rocket. So we're going to use this object called mass object. Um, so now we need to find out where we're going to attach it. And we're going to attach it to this engine mount tube. We'll just click mass object and we'll select an 18 millimeter engine hook from the database. This is the mass object editor screen right here, just in case you want to look at it. Basically, it's the simplest one of them all. Um, it has a name, a classification, and the mass. And basically, we're throwing the mass object right here. And we'll just slide it back towards the end of the motor. This is about the center of the engine hook. And so that's where our mass object will be. And when we like it, we'll click OK. So now on the engine hook, we have an, an engine block and an engine hook attached to the engine mount tube. Um, the next internal component will be the parachute, um, which is going to go into the tube, so we need to select the tube, and now we'll find the parachute, and that is right here. Um, again, we have a lot of choices. Um, I'm going to start with a 24-inch hexagon. Okay, we have... 24 inch parachute and um, I can tweak that down a little bit and uh, let's look at the descent rate right now. Our calculated descent mass is 35.48 grams. If you compare that to our selected stage mass of 47 grams, the difference is the amount of propellant in the rocket itself. So that is a good number right here. And this is our descent rate and it's a little low. So I'm going to tweak this down. Um, and actually I want to go in feet per second. I want to be around 8 to 15 feet per second. So it looks to be like around a 14 inch to 15 inch parachute will work fine. So I'll just type in a 15 inch. And that will be a good chute. And we just have to change the location. And right now I'm just going to move it back right there in the rocket. Let's change the color, make it uh, Make it an orange color, and in 3D also make it an orange color. And everything else looks okay. Um, our strings look a little long. The string length should be about the same as the diameter of the chute. So I'm just going to tweak those down a little bit. If they're too long, it has a tendency to uh, knot up. Uh, not in Roxanne, but in real life. Okay, so our parachute is in. Uh, the next item that we might put into the rocket is the um, shock cord. And again, this is going to be a mass object. So I'm going to go to mass object. And I'm going to um, cancel out of the that screen. Um, right now, here's our mass object. And we're going to change this to shock cord. And under material, I will select um, a good material. A 100-pound Kevlar from Apogee is a really good material. Hint, hint. Um, length, um, I'll probably make it 36 inches. Hit tab. And uh, the location in the rocket. Usually you put your shot cord below your parachute to kind of act as a little extra insulation. And the name, I'm going to change this to shot cord. And color, uh, this time I'm only going to change the 2D color because that's really all that matters. Make it a little darker. And there's our shock cord. Um, next thing we might want to add is a launch lug. 
Again, uh, the launch lug is going to go on the body tube. And we'll go here to launch lug, add that. Uh, I'm going to select from the database an eighth inch launch lug from Apogee. Click OK. Make that screen bigger. Okay, so right now our launch lug is right there. Um, the launch lug, the best location is where it spans the center of gravity. So I'm going to change that launch lug location to be back here. And I'm going to change it to the base of the awning part so that if we make my tube longer, it will go back with it. But I would probably have to tweak its location later. Um, radial position. Um, we need to look at the back view of the rocket for this. You see right here what's happening. Our launch lug is interfering with our fins. So we're going to take that radial position and we're going to move it off. And 60 degrees should be a good number. And uh, color, let's make it a white launch lug. And in uh, 2D, make it that color. Let's go back to our side view. So there's our launch lug, and click OK. Um, I do want to save my design so that we don't lose anything in case of unforeseen power outage. Um, so that has been saved. And let's look at it in 3D. Let's uh, trackball is on. So there is the launch lug on the rocket. Everything looks good. At this point, our design is done, and uh, you know we're ready to launch. So we just go here to set launch conditions. We've already got the engine loaded. Starting state, uh, we're at 10 degrees angle of a launch angle. Let's, let's make that a little bit further. Uh, launch conditions, we've got a breezy day, and let's just go to flight profile and see what happens. So here is our launch pad, and uh, we click launch. The rocket takes off. Look, it, it weathercocked right into the wind. It didn't go on the angle of, that we had originally set. So it's telling us the trajectory is going to change when we launch this rocket. And now it's going to start descending. And each one of these dots is one second apart. So when they're close together here, that means it's a constant speed. Uh, when they're moving far apart, that means the rocket is accelerating. When they get closer together, it's slowing down. Um, and let's find out how far downrange this lands. And look at that, 3,324 feet downrange. And in our summary screen, maximum altitude of 1,366 feet. Um, other things that we want to look at, uh, maximum acceleration, that looks about right. Uh, velocity at deployment. Um, we want to keep this number in this in this ballpark. Uh, we don't want to get uh, above 50 miles an hour. We're going to strip a parachute off. Um, the arrow is pointing up, which means that uh, the rocket was going up as it, the parachute deployed. Let's go ahead and plot a graph since we haven't done that yet. Uh, we're going to, on the x-axis, we're going to have time. Under y-axis, we got acceleration. And let's change this to um, altitude. Let's scroll down here. Oh, here's velocity. We want velocity, and we want altitude. There, oops, one wow, one was altitude. And our colors are green, blue, and orange. Um, data point markers, we don't need. Um, Legend positioned, we'll say no legend, and we'll plot this graph. All right, so here's the graph. Let's make it wider so we can see it more. Okay, so here's this this line right here is apogee. This red line here is burnout. Um, we can zoom in on this so that we can see what's going on. So click on the zoom key and then just draw a line around what you want to zoom in on. So here is launch point. This orange line is altitude. Um, and this green line is the, the acceleration. And our blue line is velocity. So our highest velocity occurs right here, right before burnout. So everything looks pretty good on this, this rocket. Um, 
So in the next uh, video, we'll probably get into some more design and make it a little bit more advanced.